This video is going to be on how to create a light box gallery. What you need to do is click on this website here, this web link here. It'll take you to this page. Next, what you need to do is you need to come up here and you need to download the file. So I'm going to go ahead and click. When this page opens, what you want to do is come down here and clone or download and select download zip. Okay. Open that zip file up on your desktop if it's not already open. Go ahead and click back. The two types of galleries you can create are individual images. You can click on them and it opens up a larger image based on the thumbnail. Same thing here. Or you can create one that progresses, meaning if I click on this one, I get an arrow and I can click back and forth between these images. I'm going to go ahead and close that. So what we're going to do is we're going to get started here. And what we've already done is step one by downloading the files. Okay, going down. And next what we need to do is we need to do step three. And it's asking you to grab the files from the DIST folder. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, moving the browser out of the way. The files that downloaded are right here. And what's being required are all the files from this folder. So I am going to select them all and go edit copy three. I'm going to place them in my USB. Okay. And now I need to decide where to put them. I already know that I've got a simple layout that I've already designed. And I'm going to go ahead and paste them in there. Okay, I already had a JavaScript file in there folder, so I'm going to go ahead and replace it with the next one. Okay, that gave me the files that are required for the light box. Okay, it gave me some images that are for closing the light box images, for progressing the light box images, and the right and left arrow. And it gave me some CSS. Now, you've got a lot more files in here than you actually need. You've got Lightbox CSS and you've got Lightbox Min CSS. You don't need them both. They're basically the same thing. The difference here is the minimized version or the min version gets rid of all the spaces in the CSS code. So I'm actually going to throw that one out. Now the next file in here is the styles that go with my layout, so I'm not going to disturb that. I'm going to go to the JS folder now. Take a look here. Again, I have basically the same types of JavaScript files. One is a minimized version and one is a regular. I'm going to get rid of the minimized version and delete it. I don't need anything that ends with map that I'm talking about here, so I'm going to delete it. Just simplify my folders. I've got the Lightbox. JavaScript file that actually makes it function, and then I've got the minimized version. So I'm going to dump the minimized version. Again, it's just more difficult to read, and there's no spaces. And then I don't need the map, so I'm going to throw that away as well. All right, so in my JS folder, I've got Lightbox Plus, Lightbox JS, and in the CSS file, I've got the Lightbox, and then I've got some other CSS files that I created earlier. All right, I'm going to close that, close this. Okay, now I'm back on this website. And what I've already done is number three here. Now it's telling me that I need to include the CSS at the top of my page. Okay, right now what this designer did gave me a kind of pseudo path to my CSS file. So I'm going to have to correct that, and that's not a big deal. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this line, and I'll modify it in Dreamweaver. So I'm going to go to Dreamweaver, and I'm going to open up my layout. It's 
in the same folder here and I'm going to open up the layout. Again, it's telling me that I needed to put this line of code in the head of my document. So here's the head of my document and I'm going to go over, over here, hit the return key and I'm going to paste that line of code in here. Now this is just a pseudo path and I'm going to have to fix it because obviously the designer has no idea where I actually stored this file. So we're going to correct where it says path to. I'm going to go back to this website and I'm also going to copy the link to the JS file that I downloaded. So I'm copying here. I'm going back to Dreamweaver. After the Lightbox style sheet, I'm going to hit the return key and I'm going to paste. I'm going to correct these paths right now. So I'm going to go quote to quote, hit the delete key, create a new quote and navigate to that Lightbox style sheet. So I'm going to my layout, simple layout, CSS, and the light box style sheet. Okay, it corrected that path. I also want to correct the path to the light box JS. So I'm going to go quote to quote, hit the delete key, create a new quote, browse. I'm going to go to that folder. USB, R116, my name folder, my simple layout, and I'm going to go to the JS folder and I'm going to pick up, I can actually pick them both up. I'll do one at a time. I'll open that one and I'm going to grab the other one as well. So I'm just going to copy the script tag and paste it again. Oops, I did not paste it right. So I'm going to edit, copy, after that script, I'm going to hit the return key and paste. I'm going to correct this path. So I'm going to go quote to quote, hit the delete key, new quote. Sorry, my cats are running around in the background and open. Okay, going back to this website. Don't have to worry about number four because basically I just did that. Okay, next I want to initialize the HTML. So I'm going to come down here. Now there's two sets. The first set are for the single images. And what I'm referring to is right here. If you want to do this style, this is what you want. This line of code. If you want to do a set of images like this, you want the next set right here. And I'm going to do the one that's a little bit more complex. So I'm going to go ahead and select these three lines of code and I'm going to go edit copy. I'm going to come back to Dreamweaver and now I need to decide where I want this gallery. I want it right under here. So after this H tag here, which is right here, oh, come on cats, I'm going to hit the return key and paste. Okay, right now I just have text and I can swap out this text here for actual images. So what I'm going to do instead of where it says image two, which is right here, I'm going to hit the delete key and instead I'm going to go insert image and I'm going to navigate to my images that are in this layout and I'm going to pick thumb frog and open it. The thumb of the image is going to end up here. I'm going to do the same thing for the next one. I'm just trying to make my code a little bit bigger. Instead of image three, which is right here, I'm going to hit the delete key. I'm going to insert another thumbnail by going insert image. I'm going to pick thumb frog two ends up here. I don't want this text, so I'm going to come up here, over here at code view, I'm going to hit the delete key, and I'm going to go insert image. And pick thumb three. Oh, 
Okay, now if I look here, I've got the images, the thumbnails right here, but the larger images are located right here. Let's see if I can get this in two nice lines. No, nope, still a little bit bigger. Okay, so my thumbnail images are right here in this slide account, but I need to get rid of the images right here. These are the larger ones, so I'm going to come over here, hit the delete key. I'm going to create a new quote, and I'm going to look for the larger frog image. So I'm going to browse, going to my image folder, and I'm going to pick the large frog. I'm going to do the same thing right here, quote to quote. I'm going to hit the delete key, create a new quote, and I'm going to browse to my larger frog too. Going to do the same thing here in this line of code, quote to quote. Hit the delete key, new quote. I'm going to browse and pick up frog three. These larger images are going to pop open, okay? By doing that, I'm going to go ahead and preview on the web. Click. And there we go. Now, I'll tell you how these are progressing. So I'm going to move this out of the way. They're progressing. Let me open this up. Let me open it up a little bit more. Based on the word road trip. Okay, since each of these lines of code have the word road trip, they're considering them a group. I could make that whatever I wanted to. I could make this frogs, but I need to make sure that I include that on each of these lines so they act like a group. Frogs. Frogs. If I preview again, it's still going to function and treat them like a group. Oops, I'm going to do the wrong, I'm going to get a different browser. Okay. Now, if I want multiple different groups, I just need to change that word, meaning if I want another set of images and I want them be, to be treated like a separate group, I would have to change this text, meaning if I wanted to do trees and treat them like a group, it should say trees, trees, trees. Now, if I want more images rather than just these three, I just need to copy one of these lines and swap out the image. So select it and I'll go copy. After that tag, I'm going to hit the return key. I'm going to hit the return key again. Now, I know in my USB, that I've got more of those images. Let me just check right really quickly. Simple gallery. I've actually got five large frogs and five thumbs. So if I go back here and I've actually, I've labeled them very much the same, which is going to help me out. So if I look here where I've got frog one, two, three, I could actually change frog three to frog four and I could change frog three again that was repeated because I copied and pasted to five. I'd want to do the same thing for the thumbs. I don't want three, three frog, I don't want three frog threes. So I'm going to come over here and change this one to four and change this one to five. I'll go ahead and preview on the web again. There we go.